Of course. Uh, there's never a dull week in this part of the, uh, the industry, that's for sure. Um, so the first thing that I have up here are um, some new granular RBAC permissions that um, came out for endpoint security, the endpoint security portion of uh, Intune. Uh, we've had a couple of people ask about this in the past, and so I was excited to see this. Um, typically, in the past, you could just, uh, there was a single role, I believe it was this endpoint security manager role here, um, that was pretty broad. If you had this role in, assigned to you in Intune, you could pretty much see everything related to um, endpoint security. Now, with these new permissions, you can actually specify specific permissions within these three areas, endpoint detection and response, app control for business, and attack surface reduction. Um, so always happy to see some additional controls over what we can and can't add into uh, various custom roles. Um, <clears throat> so this was, this was exciting to see that. Uh, also came across a blog post from our friend Gary Block um, so I'm typically uh, working with Dell machines uh, during the course of most of my career, but I know there are plenty of people out there um, working with HP machines, um, and Gary is primarily, not surprisingly, blogging about uh, HP. So he wrote a blog post here um, about moving from the old HP BIOS configuration utility to managing HP BIOS with PowerShell. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that uh, we, we got Gary's blog post out there for any of you using the old platform. It sounds like there are some additional uh, newer, um, more supported options that you might want to consider looking into. Um, and Gary does a great job here in this blog post spelling those things out. Um, last but not least, uh, another important thing that I came across here was uh, this tweet that there's a change in behavior of the Windows Update for Business deadline calculations starting in Windows 11 22H2. Um, so just important to reiterate, I think, that the deadline calculation now in 22H2 and later uh, for the quality and feature updates is based off the time the client's update scan initially discovers the update. Um, previously, it was, as noted here in the documentation, based off the release date or when the update is offered. Um, so now that deadline calculation is happening when the device discovers it for the first time. Um, and then the grace period countdown uh, will continue to start from the time of pending restart. Um, so important, um, a little bit of nuance there, but an important distinction nonetheless, uh, as we all try to make sure we understand when some of these timings for Windows updates are going to happen. So those were the things I came across. Now, another um, article that I came across uh, that I know you have talked about a couple of times, Johan, because you knew it was coming out. I have not had the opportunity to digest it yet, um, but uh, Maurice Staley over at MS Endpoint Manager wrote a nice long blog post about delivery optimization, troubleshooting, and reporting. And I know that you've mentioned uh, quite a few times recently that Delivery optimization as of late has um, had some challenges, so I didn't know if you wanted to speak to this at all. Yes, I do. Let's see here. I can uh, bring over the screen. Ah. Here. That, that's not it. That's PowerShell. We'll come back to that later. <laughs> uh, so there have been two posts lately around deliver optimization. I'll, I'll come back to Maurice's post, post in just a bit. Uh, but it started with our own uh, Phil Wilcock uh, posting in, in early June. I believe we shared this link in one of the early office hours, but I, I wanted to bring it up here because this one talks a little bit about what content that is actually appearable or not peerable, so just to bring some, some context into Maurice's blog post here in a little bit. But long story short, over the years, it's become worse. Uh, and there is more content out there that simply cannot be peered. Uh, the biggest offender right now is, is Teams. 
But as of this week or late last week, uh, we also learned that uh, new Win32 apps in Intune simply will not peer. Uh, this apparently was a known issue. There was a service update Microsoft did. They know about it. Uh, I have no ETA whether there is a fix. But long story short, if you create a new Win32 app today, it won't peer. Whereas if you use download an old Win32 app that you uploaded like in, in March, it will happily peer. So uh, hopefully uh, that will get fixed um, more quickly or quickly. Now, going back to Maurice's post here, which a fantastic blog post, by the way, uh, very, very detailed. They've been working on this. I've been getting hints about this post for months <laughs> in, in Twitter. Like, all right, <laughs> we're releasing it, we're releasing it, releasing it. And they finally did. Uh, but long story short, th this post also emphasizes on the, the fact that there are content that is not peerable. But Maurice also put together uh, updated inventory scripts uh, that will log data up to log analytics uh, with this information. And spend a little bit talking about uh, what's going on behind the scenes in these scenarios, uh, pointing out some troubleshooting scripts. And also, uh, let's see, somewhere here. Oh, that's the script. But then also provide the, uh, the queries that you can add in uh, in log analytics to get, get more details on, on how you're doing. And this graph, of course, doesn't look very promising at all. Uh, and then also some nice new updates to their, this is a long blog post. Uh, here, some additional graphs and some additional or an updated reworked uh, workbook that you can add to your Intune tenant. So, Beautiful, beautiful information, uh, allowing you to get more insight to what's going on. In parallel to this, I was having a discussion with Bruce Sa on, on Twitter, uh, who has the benefit or benefit uh, uh, opportunity to also throw C scaler into the mix. Uh, that one of his customers was using for uh, well, a VPN client, more or less. And that one turned out also to cause on grief with the default settings. He had to do some configurations there to make sure content was peering because his peering was like 0%. And it went up to 90% after doing some changes. So, yeah, anyhow, long story short, we will be sharing these links, of course, but this was a big learning um, for the past uh, few weeks here. Exciting stuff. Yeah, indeed. Uh, other things I've been working on lately has been testing out new 24H2 boot images. And for those of you that don't know, the minute you add in a boot image in Config Manager that doesn't match the ADK version that you have installed, guess what? You cannot do customizations to it through the GUI anymore. At least some customizations you cannot do in the GUI anymore. So if I have an older ADK version like this one here, but smack in a new boot image with a newer version, well, I'm missing a few of the tabs that you have available. And this is what it normally would look like. But luckily, with a healthy dose of PowerShell, you can do everything that you need to do anyway. So what I was doing here was I have a one of my lab servers. This one is running uh, ADK. Uh, for Windows 11 22H2, so this version here, that's the 22H2 version. But as you can see, I have added in a, a boot image that has a much higher version of the ADK, so 26100. And in order to work with that one, I had to uh, stole, borrowed uh, a little bit of lines from, from Mike Terrell. Uh, has been writing a lot of scripts, creating boot images lately, but, but long story short, I'm specifying where I have my boot image and I'm adding in, I'm mounting it and I'm adding in all the components that I want to have in it, uh, a few uh, as you do. And then in the very end of it, uh, do a component cleanup, dismount the image and then tell in Config Manager to customize it. So in this case, I simply wanted to add in F8 support uh, for, for troubleshooting and I want to add in a custom background image. So I had to do that through WMI. 
that allows you to side by side test different version of the bird images. And Alex over on Twitter uh, was was complaining earlier this week about all right, drivers seems to be a little bit more picky in 24H2 compared to the earlier versions. Uh, still early testing of that one, but uh, that's something to look out for and, and to verify. So what I do recommend, don't jump to this version right away for your entire production fleet. Uh, go ahead and add in, like I did here, a, a test image or two. Make a few copies of your sequences, configure them to use this one, and start to try it out. Figure out that all the drivers that you need to have working are working and everything else. So that was why I was spending some, some time on. Uh, some other things that I'll be hopefully finishing up uh, tonight if, if all goes well. I've uh, been working on a video for uh, setting up the REST PS web service, uh, which is a PowerShell driven web service. Uh, basically, from a client side, you can very simply ask a server side component to do something. Ask a database for something, ask Active Directory for something, ask Config Manager for something, MDT for something, or why not one of the many cloud services available without having to have all that authentication uh, running on the client itself, but rather tell the client to, you know what, go and hand it over to someone else, that someone else does the job, and that is indeed the REST PS service. So, uh, if all goes well, it will be published this evening. Awesome. Looking forward to that. I've heard you talk about it quite a bit uh, over the years, so excited to see what you've got there. 